get the presentation. One second. Oh, uh, the other thing I need to do. Let me hit share. Before I do that, sorry, one other thing I have to do. Okay, I'm going to get it up here in presentation mode and we will get started. Things are a little slow today. All right, so should be rendering here in a second. We are seeing your presenter view. So can you see my regular view now? No. There we go. Yeah? Yep. OK, you're, great. You're good. All right. So welcome, everybody, to today's session. Um, today, we're going to be looking at how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that get results. I'm going to go through a few housekeeping items before I turn it over to our presenter today. Uh, please note that this event will be recorded and the recording will be found on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Comments in the Zoom chat and window do not appear in the recording. Um, so in Zoom, you can please use the chat box to enter your question. And uh, I will be uh, asking questions of Locke as we go through. I want to give a little bit of background on Jeff Morris, uh, who can't be here uh, hosting today. So I am filling in for him on LinkedIn Tuesdays. He founded Career DFW in 2008 um, since he saw a need here in the area. Then he started CareerUSA.org in 2012. He wrote the, the Your Job Search book, which you can buy on Amazon or on the Career DFW webpage. He also leads the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, and he's led that since 2007. And he is a member of the Pit Crew since 2017, and that's the uh, practice interview team. Uh, every Tuesday, um, we are going to have one of these four esteemed presenters with us. Today, we are having Locke Alderson join us. We also have Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and Kurt Vandemotter as presenters. Um, so today, um, just to give you a little bit of background on Locke, um, he is a retired professional and executive recruiter. He was a senior recruiter at Oracle from 2006 to 2010. Um, recruiting and hiring Oracle and Siebel CR CRM consultants, managers, and executives. Prior to joining Oracle, Locke was previously a principal recruiter at Siebel from 1998 until 2006, where he recruited some of uh, Siebel CRM consultants and managers. Uh, Locke began working with those in job and career transition in 2001 while at Siebel, uh, something that he continues to do today. Um, and before um, joining Siebel, Locke was with Raytheon Systems. Uh, Locke founded and ran his own professional recruiting firm for 12 years, specializing in recruiting engineers, programmers, marketing, and management personnel for high-tech industries in the Southwest. Um, he holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from Texas A&M University and an MBA from University of California at Berkeley. He currently lives in Plano, Texas with his wife, Barbara. And so with that, I will turn it over to Locke. You've shared your screen. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can share your screen. Are we up? Are you sharing your screen? Um, well, I'll try. And... I don't think it's not working, so. I have you as a co-host, so you should be able to um, uh, hit share at the bottom and share your presentation. Okay. Well, it's not working, so. <clears throat> oh, uh, let me see. Uh, 
It's not working at all. My my screen is frozen, so I'm going to have to log off and log on log back. back in. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. All right. So Lockwell, um, log back in here and uh, hopefully we'll get everything going here in a minute. In the meantime, you can put your information in the chat um, and then you can network with others. Um, I know we've got other people from the Chicago area who've joined us today as well. And while we're waiting, I want to say how much we appreciate you, Patty. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm happy so, to help. <laughs> thank you for being the glue that keeps this thing running. Happy to help. And and Matt uh, is a really big part of this. Uh, he uh, was the the engineering behind all of this to get things set up. And so he is co-hosting North Dallas Plano Group on Friday mornings with Walt Glass. Happy so. to do it. Yeah, so we're really happy that we're able to help other job seekers, especially sharing the information with all of these uh, wonderful uh, presenters. We're very knowledgeable in job search. So definitely enter your information in the chat, enter in your, um, your LinkedIn profile, however else people can contact with you, any affinity points that you have, um, say you went to University of Texas, maybe you in Austin, maybe you are uh, Texas A&M, maybe you're Baylor, maybe you're something else. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot of uh, really big sports fans here. Put, put Who's your favorite baseball team? Uh, who's your favorite basketball team? Any of those um, fun fun things that we have. Um, affinity points so that when you talk with somebody that you have something to discuss. Um, so, and uh, yep, so I'm, I'm learning a little, little bit more about the, the Dallas Metroplex myself, just uh, towns where things are, even though I'm in the Phoenix area. But uh, certainly I can uh, relate to the, the Chicagoland folks that are here on the call since I'm from the Chicago area. So you can name a little town and I'll be like, yeah, I know where that is. It's in the Western suburbs or something of that nature. So anyway, we should have uh, Locke back with us shortly. Um, Matt, let me know if you see him in the participant list. Right now, I don't see him rejoining. Uh, maybe he's having a little bit of technical issue as he's logging in. Yeah, maybe he had to reboot. But I did show him as a co-host. Yeah. You might want to might wanna pause the recording while we're waiting for him. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Oh, there he is. Looks like he's logging in again. Oh, is he? Okay. There he is. All right. So let me make a co-host. All right. So he should be able to share his screen. All right. So he should be showing up here in a minute or at least i can see him in the participants list did i miss him on the pictures there he is he's on mute hey patty do you want to put the uh us to put questions at the end does that matter uh, As well, they come um do, would you like me to um are you going to pause and would you like me to ask questions throughout block we could do either one Okay, um, so you let me know when you want to pause and take questions, and people can put questions throughout, or um, as they're going through, they can they can ask you. Okay. I've made you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Well, it's, I'm trying to load the PowerPoint, and it's not taking its sweet time, and it's now loading it <laughs> three times, <laughs> four times. It's, it's technology. It's great when it works. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you're an IT guy. Explain technology to us. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Well, Lanka, if worst comes to worst, you can uh, send your PowerPoint to Patty or I, and we can display it for you while you talk. Yeah, maybe I can pull it up here. I think if you send it to me. Nice to meet you, Matt Spears. Matt's are rare. Keelans are even rarer. And Matt Keelans, I only know of three in the world. Yep. <clears throat> Patty's doing a great job recruiting from Chicago. <laughs> I'm doing my best, right? By by way of Arizona? Of That's course. Impressive. That's impressive. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> so not bad. I'm in other meetings in, in Chicago. Okay, it looks like I see your your Zoom hey. uh, your PowerPoint. Ta -da. Okay. We should be good to go. There we are. Yep. There we go. You're well, thanks, good. Thanks, Patty, for that wonderful introduction. I didn't realize she was going to read all of my while. We'll <laughs> I skipped a few someone. paragraphs. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things I want to ask you, come on, people. Let's. Okay. One of the things when I've been job hunting on over the years, and I during my career, I had six times when I was unemployed at least if you don't count the times when contracts came to mind. So I always went back to scripture verses of scripture that were helpful for me. So one that has stuck with me over the years is, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So that was one of the verses that I frequently reflect back on. So that's kind of a, a little bit of my background that's important to me. But I guess one of the questions we wanna ask the, for, for everybody that's here is why are you using LinkedIn? It originally got started as a networking tool between sales and marketing professionals. Recruiters quickly found out that people were listing information about them that could be basically the equivalent of a resume on their LinkedIn profiles. So that's how it got started. LinkedIn today has over a billion users worldwide, and it's actually used by uh, almost a million and a half uh, recruiters every day, not every day, but are signed up for LinkedIn to use a recruiting tool. So it's, it's a wonderful tool for that. Within the United States, there's only about uh, 170, maybe I think the last I saw was 180 million people on LinkedIn. So what I want to talk about today is LinkedIn as a recruiting tool. Your headline, why it's so important. You know, your headline and your open to work sections. I want to talk about your dashboard and your about sections, your professional work history, your skills and endorsements, and then how do you optimize your profile? And go, how do recruiters actually conduct searches? I think that's important for you to know. And how you can create job alerts uh, for yourself so that the new job postings are pushed out to you so you don't have to go search for them every day. And you can set that up for a daily or a weekly distribution. They usually come in about eight in the morning. I'm still on the alerts for so many jobs. I don't care to number on how I eliminate them. I wish I could. And then filters, how you can use filters to, to sift through the, if you get a whole bunch of responses or when you're looking for a job, uh, then you can narrow it down. Where recruiters use the same filters and narrow the number of candidates down. And then some things that you need to take a look at for your profile if they aren't on there. So what are you doing to attract attention for recruiters and hiring managers? Because first impressions are vitally important. Well, it all starts with your profile. If you take a look at mine, you can see I've got a banner shot. I've got a headline, I mean, a headshot there. I've got my name, my headline underneath that. And I'm open to work. Uh, right now, I've, I've opened up the open to work section. Sometimes on some of the other slides, it's closed. But one of the things, that's the first thing, this is the first thing that people will see about you when they open up or recruiters when they do a search. So one of the things I want to talk about that somebody mentioned in a recruiting uh, seminar that I attended back in February, I think it was, was did your profile pass the freshness guarantee? And what do I mean by that? Well, when you buy produce at the grocery store, you look to see if it's fresh. You may squeeze the tomatoes. You may see if, if the bananas are green or are turning yellow. But if they're brown, you're probably going to pass those up. When you buy meat or, or um, milk, you're going to take a look at the date that is the best used by. So those are the any that are past that date, not recommended that you take those. So what have you done to freshen up your resume? 
you don't want it to let it get to the point where it, it looks like your 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 rep profile looks like an old rusty car that's uh, gotten that way because of neglect. So in the six to 10 seconds that you have to take a look at somebody's resume or somebody's profile, I'm using uh, almost an analogous with resumes. Again, uh, these are the things that people notice. And that's the first screen that's available to recruiters and hiring managers when they look at it. And what you're trying to do with some of these areas, like the area of your headline under here, oops, sorry about that. My touch screen is very sensitive, uh, is to look at your headline and to look at those things that are of interest to you. I've got some job titles there, but I've got some other things that are with that. And there's some adjectives, which is something that LinkedIn is new that you can do. Your headline, actually, you have about 220 characters that you can play with. So that's important to talk about. Well, take a look at your profile. These are the kind of things that you want to do with your profile to increase its ranking. And by increasing the ranking, what you're doing is increasing the odds when, when the a search is run that you'll end up at the top of the stack. Your, your profile, your headline is the number one thing that you want to do. You want to have a good, good headshot, not one where you're out uh, enjoying a beer or two or celebrating Oktoberfest or out on the lake on uh, a hot summer day. Open to work is a section that's there that allows you to list an additional five job titles and some other information about you, whether you're open to hybrid work, you want to work there, you're open to relocation. The contact information is the number one the thing that I see. I'm working with a candidate this afternoon who's in a networking group that I'm with. His phone number is not in his resume and I'm directly connected with him. I can't find his phone number. If he hadn't sent me his, his, his resume with his phone number in it, I wouldn't know how to get in touch with him. So the easiest way to do that, I know on Jeff's banner, banner photo, he's got his phone number and his banner photo. But I do suggest that you put on the top line of your about section, put your email address and your phone number. Mine says, let's connect in my email address because I'm not necessarily looking for a lot of phone calls. But put both of them there. It can also be at the bottom of your about section, which is where a lot of people end up putting it. The next area is your experience section. And if you have an unusual job title, List in parentheses what that job title is. I know I've been with companies that have had titles like member of technical staff three. Well, if you're a recruiter, it's kind of hard to figure out what that is unless you have worked with that company extensively as a source of candidates. So put that in parentheses, make it easy for that. And in your experience section, keep the, the descriptions short, you know, three or four lines of description of what your job was is about the max that people are going to read. And use the keywords from your profession so that people know that you're really a technical guru in that field. The area, another area is your skills from your profession. Most of us have found out that we can lift, list 50 skills and we can link that to the where we've uh, had use of those skills. But did you know that you can arrange the, the selection of those skills which appear on the first screen? Because now they're limited. It used to be three, and I think it's down to two skills that first appear when somebody screens through your profile. And if you've got endorsements, that's like letters of reference. It's invaluable to have those, particularly from your most recent experience. In addition to education, most of the profiles I've read and a lot of the resumes that I read over the years simply list somebody's education. They fail to mention the, the continuing education that they've done, the awards, the certification, the professional development that they've used. These show that you're current in your profession and recommendations from former co-workers and former bosses. So, so those are some of the things that involve with your profile. Sounds like a lot, and it's worth looking at. And by the way, if you're interested in a copy of this, as somebody mentioned earlier, I'll send you a copy of the slide deck. Just send me an email at lockalderson at gmail.com. Lockalderson is one word, and I'll send you the slides. Next Lock, thing I have a quick question ahead, for questions. you on the previous page. Um, so when you say recommendations from coworkers and former bosses, I've also included former clients that I've worked with. No, um, but I have two. So if you look at mine, I think I've got 39 over the years. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm in a semi-retired, so I don't get very many of those anymore. But again, that's a good thing to mention. And the more recent ones are important. Okay, but people can look back at the history of those over the years. Okay. So should we have something within the last three or four months um, or however, you know, well, six it, months? It, it, you want to try and get, you know, at least one or two for each job that you've had. Okay. For each, maybe one per client. If you work with a dozen clients over the years, four or five for the client, clients that you've had in the last couple of years. And it's nothing to ask somebody. You know, I tell people the only, only charge I have for working with people is, is you put in a recommendation for me on LinkedIn. 
and occasionally somebody's nice enough to do that. So that's what that's all about. But we and should also them. do give recommendations to people yes. as well, that we're not just getting all the recommendations. Not at all. You want to, but you, again, you don't want to exchange them right away one for one because right. recruiters are wise enough to find out, well, he recommended go to their, their profile and find out you've recommended them at the same time. So again, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's something to be aware of. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let's move on. If there are no other questions for the moment. Hey, Lott. Go ahead. Just wanted to point out that uh, I put a couple links in the chat. Uh, the first one's from ShareThrough. Uh, it actually will evaluate your headline. For you, got, you jumped ahead of me a little bit, but uh, it's on. Oh. Oh, so okay. take a look at it in the chat. It is a way to evaluate your headline. And you'll see that in the, about the next four, the fourth slide to come. Okay. Right, Do you also you... have photo feeler in there as well? No, I don't have that one in there. So, so photo feeler will actually evaluate your headshot. Okay. Good, good. I learned something new with every time. And that's why I try and, try and keep up. I've only revised about five slides for today's presentation. So one of the things you want to do know about your headline is a grabber. Does it get somebody's attention? Again, somebody frequently I'll see for executives, they've described the functions that they do, but they haven't described the jobs that they're seeking. And again, recruiters, when they search, they don't search for functions, they search for job titles. That's something to remember. Likewise, on your headline, does it tell does it say who you are and what you do? Can you identify with it? Let's take a look at some sample headlines. Well, I went backwards instead of forward. Nothing wrong with these headlines, as you see. Unemployed, retired, they're probably truthful, but they're not the most positive foot to put forward. Seeking a new opportunity is more descriptive. Likewise, as former VP of Finance, the only thing with former VP of Finance, recruiters are going to ask, how long has he been out of that role? So that's something to do. Social media strategists and content managers seeking new opportunity, print and digital media, uh, PR, marketing and corporate communications is better. Again, that uses about 100, I think that's about 130 characters that I've done there. That pipe character that you see between there, I'll mention that. It's a, on the, it's just above the enter key on your keyboard. It's a, it's a shift to get that. If you use that or a backslash between the titles like that, be sure and put a space on either side of it. Because if you link them together with no space, that means that they are not searchable when somebody does a search. Well, Supply chain procurement purchasing, pretty succinct, but it does tell some somebody what their, their background is, okay? Senior accountant, general ledger, uh, financial reporting costs. Again, some of these are titles and some of them are functions. But again, you want to put enough functions, in, I mean, titles in there that people can find what they're looking for on you. Executive assistant, when I've done searches on that in Dallas when I was with Lee Heck Harrison, there's only about 40,000 profiles that have that in their headline. So again, you want to amplify that with some other titles and some other things that you've done. IT project manager with idle and scrum, scrum experience and agile is one that'll get recruiters attention in a hurry. They'll probably look a little bit further about that. General manager manufacturing aerospace, pretty narrowly defined, but again, there aren't a lot of people in that kind of category. So again, headline depends a little bit on you. One of the things that I found at somebody else's presentation, and I'm not above passing that along, is a headline generator. What that allows you to do is to add uh, adjectives like accomplished or experienced, energetic, and several titles, and then what you bring to the bring to the party, what value you might bring. So that's just something, as I say, it's in the slide deck. This for the Matt to tell you what the headlines look like. Let's take a look at my old headline, and you can see it there. Nothing wrong with what I said with career consultant Lee Heck Harrison and so forth. And again, the, the headline share through is right down at the bottom for if you want to click on that with that. I revised my headline and it went from a, a, a 50 note rating to about a 75 rating with what's there. Again, you can see sought after speaker at workshops, highly skilled technical and professional recruiter, successful executive recruiter. Those are some of the things that people look for when we're talking about recruiting. Here's some more descriptive headlines. Again, accountant, senior accountant, increasing productivity. Notice the amplification with each of these. I won't go into each of them, but you can take a look at it. Full stack applications developer. Recruiters for IT people have learned the keywords like that. And another one is able to relate, able to explain high tech to customers. I know when I was with Siebel and with Oracle, we were always looking for business, business analysts that could take what the customer's requirements were and translate them for the guys in the back. 
So those are just some things to look at. You can move on again. The open to work section is it's mentioned there on the banner underneath from about five o'clock to nine o'clock. Some have said it's like the banner of the, the bouquet of roses that they toss on the Kentucky Derby winner. And by the way, that's I think it's this weekend that the Kentucky Derby is running. Anyway, that you can notice what that's all about. The open to work section, as I mentioned, allows you to add additional titles. As you start to type in titles up in here, you notice as this types in career, artificial intelligence of LinkedIn is there and you can choose from any that are there. If the title that you attempt to put in is not in the vocabulary for LinkedIn, it won't allow you to put it in. And notice you can choose workplace, you know, whether you want to work on site or hybrid or remote. And again, the locations that you're open to. If you're open to location, this is a good way to put it. And it also gives you a recruiting status. You know, where, where, where are you in your recruiting process? Again, recruiters like low hanging fruit, people that are available and looking to work and looking to move. They're the ones usually that might get a first contact if they make all the other qualifications. Another area that you wanna take a look at is your analytics homepage. If you go click on home and go to your tools, this is the number of times people have taken a look at your at your uh, at your profile in the last week or so, or looking to notice that you have. When I posted that I was going to be speaking on Sunday night, my notice went up from about twenty to about one hundred and fifty just overnight. The other thing that's noticing down here, oh, sorry about that. I touched the screen and shouldn't. Locke, I had a quick question for you. Sure. Um, so going back to um, this part where you're saying, oh, look at the analytics, is that only available to LinkedIn premium members or is that available no, to everybody? No. This is my screen. I've tried premium. I don't use it now. The thing that I was going to mention down here at the bottom, it says 60 search appearances and profile views. Again, you might have somebody take a look at your profile, but you really want to show up as where you're in the search appearances. Okay. Well, that's just something to be aware of. It gives you statistics. If you click on that, one of the things it will tell you, well, it will tell you some of the people who've looked at your profile and the companies that they've been with. Another thing that you can use in the featured section is to supply some of your work, whether it's your resume. I have some of my presentations there. I think I've got seven listed. My son lists his portfolio, his digital portfolio. He's a motion graphics designer. So he's got some of the projects that he's worked on. Short two minute clips, if you will, videos. And those are the kind of things that stand out for people. If you have an author like Jeff, you might want to put the book in that section. He's also got that book, I think, in his headline. So, so that's something that you can talk about. Let's take a look at your, um, what have I got that titled? This is your summary section in the about section. It used to be called the summary, but now it's called the about. This one's a little bit long. But notice at the top, the first thing that it has right up there, got the person's Got their email address, okay? It's a little bit long, but it's very descriptive. This is an excellent uh, profile of what somebody has done. It breaks out and below that, it lifts their specialist, financial planning analysis. If you do use acronyms like FPNA, which a lot of recruiters know if they worked in finance and accounting recruiting, they know what FPNA means, but some recruiters don't know what they mean. If you use AMA, there are only about 20, if you look in the older Webster's dictionary, 20 different organizations that have AMA as their, as their acronym. So explain it the first time that you try and use it. Here's another one that we want to use. Come on. My screen is frozen again. I don't know what I've done. I see the cursor moving. It's moving. If it's cleared it off now, there we go. Some other resume samples you can use, unlike your resume, you can use first person now in, in your summary section. I'm a grateful partner to many world-class and awarding companies. This is somebody notice the key competencies that they mentioned there. I'm a strategic, creative, hands-on marketer. Again, normally when you use those kind of phrases in a resume, they tend to be considered fluff unless they have some example to, or to give the credibility to them. I know when I tell people that they've done those things, there's nothing wrong with them. They're probably true. But without further explanation, they can come across as a set as fluff. So those are just some exa 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 extra examples of summaries. Taking a look at the experience section, you want to have your title. 
your company names and dates and duties and responsibilities, you want to try and limit those to three to five lines, as I said, so they're readable. This just happens to be from my profile when I was with Oracle Corporation. Notice I've used three and a half lines for the description of my duties. I've listed a couple of accomplishments that are there. And I also happen to list, this is a farewell, farewell email that Amanda Gill sent to the recruiting staff about me when I retired from Oracle in, in June of 2010. I just happened to toss it in. It's like a recommendation or a, uh, from somebody else. So I just toss it in just so that people know about that. But those kinds of accomplishments are the things that you've been done. Again, the reason that you want to talk about those and the reason I mentioned that, the bulleted accomplishments, is because they offer credibility to you. They talk about you in other ways. And if you're doing that, the things that I have, I want to know if you could do the job. So they look not only at your duties and responsibilities, they look for resumes, uh, that show about performing those duties and responsibilities. And sure, they look at your accomplishments. And one of the things that you say with your accomplishments, this is kind of like saying, this is what I've done for my employers. And by implication, Mr. Employer, that's what I can do for you. Okay. Another thing is that LinkedIn has added, you can add other things to your profile now. There are a couple that I'll touch on, but those are just some of them that you can add to your profile. The two, two that I want to touch on, one, if you're currently looking for a job, you want to add a current position. And that kind of looks like this. I just filled it in. You can tell what's the title that you're using. That's the title of the job that you're looking for, the most common title. You're looking for a full-time opportunity. And what you might list is the company, the type of industry that you're looking in. This software developer could be in, a, in, in telecommunications or in another, another field. He's starting to fill in the location as well. And he's open to that, as you see from the drop-down intelligence from that. But that adds a little bit more information about you, and you should have that that you are looking for a job because one of the things in the LinkedIn, LinkedIn algorithm is they look for a current job. And if you're if you have a date for ending date for the last job and are not working right now, it takes it, it doesn't add to your summary, if you will, for the, the algorithm. The other thing that they've added is that you can add a project that you've had. I know I added this particular one at one time I was or the, the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Staffing Management Association, I was the program manager and arranged all the speakers for about five years. So that's something that you can add to show that. And a lot of people with IT backgrounds, this is where you can add those, or if you've had a lot of experience in project management, this is where you do that. You talk about Mark, skills. We have yes, a question. quick question. Um, so the question is, I've noticed people adding the hashtag open to work at the end of their about section. What is the function or value of this? It has something to do with social media and I can't have, when do some people do searches on open to work, they, it brings up their, their profile or their resume. I'm not, that's one that I'm not familiar with, even though I've used it. So, okay. Moving on to skill down your profile on skills and endorsement. It allows you to list three skills and endorsements there. You can add those as you see from the list that are there. Again, you, you can just by clicking on that and it will list that as a skill. If you type in, try and type in a skill that LinkedIn does not have in its vocabulary, it won't let you add it. But one of the things that you can do about your skills, when you open that to skills and endorsements, there's three dots up there. And again, this is my profile, so that's what yours should look like when you do it. When you click on that, it allows you to do that because these are the three of my 50 that show up when somebody looks at it. As I say, I think they've narrowed that down to two because of the number of endorsed by and where you've done those kind of things show up now. But those are the three off of my profile when I do a search. But if you click on those three dots up there, it allows you to drag and drop by putting your cursor over the four lines to the right and holding down on your cursor, you can drag and drop any of those brought up to the top, which is helpful because if you, if LinkedIn, if you don't, LinkedIn will choose them for you based on their algorithm. And those may not be the ones that you want to emphasize. So executive search consulting and talent acquisition happen to be the ones that are there. I could rearrange that. It's amazing that professional recruiting and ranked very high, very low. Okay. I haven't gotten very many endorsements, but again, for executive search, I've done a lot more of those. Actually, I've done a lot more professional recruiting than executive search just by the volume that's involved. But that's a way that you can rearrange your skills. Again, take a look at other people. One of the things that I suggest for people, if you're not getting a lot of hits from LinkedIn, from recruiters and hiring managers, do a search for yourself on LinkedIn. This happens to be one for me. I went looking for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And by doing that, it brought up, as at this time, this was a, several years ago, 
There are about 26,000 people that have recruiter in their profile and their headline. So that's one of the things that you can do. If you don't show up in the first 10 screens, and that's 10 snapshots per screen, that's 100 profiles. Again, you're probably not going to get found when somebody does a search. So one of the things that you could do is to, to open up their profiles and see what are some of the words that they're using in there and use them in yours if they apply. Again, those are the, the kinds of things that will get you higher ranking. When I was doing active recruiting and on LinkedIn every day, uh, I used to appear in the first, 10 screen, first two screens on LinkedIn. Again, so that's something to consider. Take a look at how you come across to other people and that's a way that you can find out. And if you don't find yourself, try beefing up your, your profile. I looked at this as one for one of those people on the list for her, and she was a second degree connection. You can notice some of the things about her on the background. She's got senior recruiter, you know, open to work. She's got recruiter, talent acquisition specialist, partner, et cetera. So those are some of the things to do. Let's move on and try and do some searches. We're searching on LinkedIn. How does LinkedIn actually run a search and how to recruiter search? There's a slight difference there. And what are some results of some of those recruiter searches? And how do you go about searching for jobs? Those are the important things that I think that you might be interested in. And Locke, just going back to the sure. skills, there are now 100 skills that you can list instead of 50. Okay, got a question? It's something recent, so it may not have been rolled out to everyone just yet, but it is in the process of being rolled out. Okay. And that was? The 100 skills versus 50 skills. Okay, up, up, up to it from, from 50 to 100. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, it gives you a lot more to play with. Again, those numbers after the number of times that I've been endorsed for those different things. And, and also, two, um, if you look at a particular um, job, um, it'll show the number of skills you match. And if you click on it to see what other skills um, you don't have in your profile, you have, if it applies, you have the ability to add them from a job description that you're currently looking at. Right. Well, again, those are some of the tips. That, again, I learned something from you all just as many times as I do this presentation. I've, I've learned about four different things already today. Okay. Well, let's take a look at, at searches. And what do recruiters really search for? Well, they, they look at your profile and they do an activity on that, your activity on LinkedIn. These are just some of the things that, like that and your search is ranked on the sum of all the values for each of the fields in your profile. Your activity is one of those as well, whether you've got a current job or not. The higher scores uh, appear at the top of the list for that search. Recruiters generally look for a match on job titles, the first thing they look about. And those are found in your current and past jobs, your headline, open to work section, about and employment sections. So those were, that's where those fields are. They look for keywords and skills. Okay, and I know as a recruiter, first things I would typically look for is, is for titles. Again, they're looking for keywords on somebody. Industries and specific, I know if you're in the healthcare field, people who work outside the healthcare field feel that they they're being discriminated against because they don't have a, that experience. And the truth is, that's probably true, okay? Healthcare can be kind of incestuous in that way, looking for people with healthcare experience. Education, I know we'll look, take a look at one of the profile, one of the search results in Education Matters. I know I was, was interviewed for a job as a recruiter or recruiting, I can't remember if it was a recruiter, recruiting manager, and they were looking for a recruiter with an MBA from one of the top business schools in the country. And at that time, or depending upon whose list you look at, University of California, Berkeley usually appears on that list. Geographic location. Again, typically about that. And one of the reasons that you look at that recruiters, and we'll look at that when we look at your searches, usually recruiters look for somebody that's willing to, to within a 25 mile radius of the job, unless it's a, a job that requires travel or, or relocation. Because people don't generally are not willing to drive more than 20, 25 miles to work. And with the price of gas, that's not, not unusual. The other thing to look at is prior and prior current and prior companies. They look at your pedigree and see if you worked for a competitor. And then they look at the summary. Well, let's actually take a look. This is from Kurt Vandemotter. He's a, he has LinkedIn Professional, which is a, a software license that allows him to take a look at all of LinkedIn worldwide. You notice up there or the top, there were 710 million people that he could look at. 
Okay, by entering something in there, he has three or four input screens. By clicking some of the boxes there, he can narrow that down to about 70 people within about 30 seconds, letting the recruiter do the work. So that's from LinkedIn Recruiter. Again, there's a recruiter light. Again, the re recruiter package license is, I think, $10,000 a year. So a recruiter light, which another friend that I know has, is only $5,000 a year, but it's primarily for the U.S. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what a recruiter looks at and what we actually find. This was for a search for a product manager, and they were looking for somebody in the greater Seattle area, and a, a senior product manager. They would take somebody from the San Francisco area, they were looking also because product manager and product marketing are very similar in some respects. They would include that as a skills that they were looking for. And the other thing that they're looking for, they're looking for some competitive companies. Down at the bottom, Microsoft, Amazon, and Fluke are all headquartered up in the Seattle area. And then down at the very bottom, you see the University of Washington. So they look at candidates. That search result came up with six, about 6,900 candidates. And the people that are following the company, there were about 2,500 of those, and have engaged the company more times than dollars, 462. The recruiter is going to look at that, move on and take another look, take a look at another search. This one was for a project manager in Chicago. There were 60, 70, 40, almost 43,000 uh, candidates identified, but only 63 of them, or 83 of them, were open to work or new opportunities. Again, recruiters are going to go after that low-hanging fruit. Those are going to be the, probably the first ones they look at to see if they have the qualifications, making it easy for them. Again, but some of the things that they're looking for over there, they were looking in the Chicago area, but we consider somebody from San Francisco or New York. They wanted somebody with a strategy background, business strategy, and knew something about analytics. And the other areas that they had, corporate development, marketing, and else are. One of the schools that they were looking at was Northwestern, just north of Chicago. Moving on to the next one, as you start your searches, this is one of the boxes. You can do it with the initial search box up there, or you can look under jobs. If you click on jobs, it gives you two options there. The search the job, you can search by job title or put in a company name, and you could put in a location. If you don't add a location and have it, had a prior location there from an earlier search, it's going to default to the United States. So that's one of the things to remember about that. Take a look, this was for a sales representative in the U.S. because in this case, the individual failed to put in a location and brought that back. No way, ended up with about 200,000 possible candidates for that job. And again, not everybody who shows up on a search is actually looking for a job. So again, the recruiters want the people that are looking for a job. So that's where that open to work comes into play. Those are people that are more interested, more likely to say yes. I know when I started in recruiting and took some training, they said, well, you're going to, if you, this was when I had my own firm, and they said, if you want to make 20 hires a year, 20 placements, you're going to probably do about 5,000 telephone calls. And 4,000 of those are going to say, no, I'm not interested. So again, those are the odds that you enter that recruiters have. So they're looking to reduce those odds so they get some yeses. But again, notice the sales recruiter is in the United States. Moving along, I did a senior, senior account in, 25, in Plano, Texas, and limited it to 25 miles. That's the default setting for mileage. Now, if you're looking for a job, you may want to up that to 50. If you're living in the Dallas area, you might, somebody mentioned that they're in McKinney, I think, earlier in the conversation. And again, working in downtown Dallas is more than 25 miles. So you might up that to 50 miles in terms of your search, looking for jobs. Okay. And by the way, when the first time that you do that, the job here is highlighted. That description is over here on the right side. And as you scroll down, you can look at that. The jobs that are promoted means that they may be jobs that somebody has paid to post. And again, it used to be at about $200 of posting on LinkedIn. It's probably gone up since that time. Okay. The filters that I mentioned, they're now along the right, right third of a column. And this is from an older slide shot that I took. Again, the things that they can do and the reason that they've added filters, it helps you to find out. So if we looked for a recruiter in Dallas, Texas, as I say at the time, and one of the ways that you do it, at the time, there were 1,800 of those. 150 were on contract. 86 were working part-time. There were a couple of internships as well. Okay. By clicking on the past week, we can narrow it down from 2,000 to 634. And I do re recommend, unless you're in an unusual profession, you probably want to narrow the field down to the past week or even the past 24 hours. 
other search engines. I know on indeed.com, it allows you to drop it down for seven. Their top is 14 days and seven, then three, then within the last 24 hours. One of the things that LinkedIn did that they picked up from indeed.com was the salary filter. And again, that allows you to filter. Notice most of the jobs are paying $40,000 or less. Okay. But those that are over 100, there's only 83 that are listed. Now, the salary estimates that are plugged in by LinkedIn or by Indeed.com are estimates unless they've quoted the salary figure on the job posting. Again, the LinkedIn features I want to touch on, one of those over here says easy apply. The only caveat or warning that I'll give you about easy apply, if you try and use that and cannot upload your current resume, don't do it because otherwise it will take your profile. And your profile is basically cast in concrete versus your resume, which you can update. Because you're probably not going to update your profile for every job that you apply for with Easy Apply. So that's one of the things to take a look at. You can also filter by industry and by company. Again, Deloitte, and this because it was open-ended in terms of at any time, over time, Deloitte probably had 97 recruiter openings that they were looking for, okay? and industry-wise as well. So Again, Mark, HC, yes. We have one other question for you. Um, should you follow the recruiting company or the company that the company, the recruiting company is placing you in? I would think it would be both. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think both. Again, sometimes that's the, that's the case. But again, know who your audience is. And again, if you're working with an executive search firm and playing with a firm or trying to apply directly, I would I would work that out with your executive recruiter because sometimes you can do that. And if a candidate has submitted it directly, they may not be considered because they submitted by the search firm. Well, so, I mean, hitting the follow button on LinkedIn, like following the company. Yeah. Oh, yes. By following the company, that's some of that low-hanging fruit. Remember, part of the algorithm is, is you're following a company. Okay. Yeah. So they should be. This is another them. search for quality assurance. And again, by using quality assurance, it's going to pick up, and I did a presentation for the American Society of Quality Engineers in Dallas. And so it was primarily managers and senior people. So it brings up the quality search. If you'll notice, the first job listed is for a quality inspector, a quality technician. So most of the jobs, if you do it that way, going to pick up the jobs that you're interested in, but there were at that time were almost 2,000. So by adding quality assurance manager, which I think is the next slide, yep. It narrowed it down to about 174. So it limited about 90% of those job postings by doing it that way on the filters. Now the filters that you have, there's an easy apply there or a reset. And I mentioned the reset, if you're not finding the results or you've gone through, through too many filters, you can go back and hit reset and it'll take you back to your original search without having to re-enter it. And it's just something that you mentioned that. Okay, let's take a look. This was one was because the executive assistant Started to type in Dow. Again, you need to select because there is a Dallas, Georgia. I think there's a Dallas, Oregon as well. So again, you want to put your the the drop down or the intelligence there for Dallas. Shows Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, which is the whole area. Dallas, Texas, Dallas County, etc. So there you can narrow it down by location as well. Another thing that you can do is to create alerts for yourself. There's the job alert button as you're looking for a recruiter, and when you click on that. It allows you to set the, you know, when do you want to get the announcements about that daily or weekly? And by down below at the bottom, it shows with the radio button on. Okay. But that will save you doing a lot of searching. Those come in, as I say, about eight before it, usually about eight in the morning, as I recall, when most of the time when I got mine. So some of the things that you need to think about for your own profile, you want to complete all the sections in your profile to increase your ranking in searches. Name, use the name that you normally use. I, my legal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. I've just gotten a new identification card from my healthcare provider, and it happens to use my first name, which I don't go by. I go by Locke. So again, that's something to do. Make it easy for that person to, uh, to get in touch with you. I mentioned the freshness guarantee, but do something about your profile up to ref refresh it every at least every once a week. The headline, list the job title or titles for the positions you're looking for. Don't necessarily tell about your functional background because I've not searched for functional backgrounds. I've never searched for a jack of all trades, okay? And that's one that I've seen occasionally in titles, okay? I've looked for people that, that do those things, but that's not the title that I was looking for. I've actually searched for an executive chef for a company here in Dallas as well. 
that was an unusual assignment. They had to be, they were looking for a former Navy, Navy uh, chief petty officer who was a chef on a, a big ship. So unusual things happen like that. Okay. Open to work, complete that open to work section and take advantage of that. Now, for those of you who are in stealth mode, meaning that you're currently in a job and don't want to know that you're looking for a job, you may only limit your 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 open to work area to recruiters. Okay, when you do that, it gives you that option. You want to list your phone number and your email at the top, the first line of your about section. Make it easy for that person to get in touch with you. As I say, this guy that I'm working with this afternoon, he doesn't have his phone number. He has not opened up his security settings settings to list his phone number, even to his first degree connections. So it's very difficult with that. Experience checks and used. If you have titles, job titles are unusual. Use the title that's commonly recognized in industry or the title that you look for when you're looking for a job. And add those, add those accomplishments, those measurable results from performing your duties. They add credibility to your experience, okay? People that want to copy the slide deck, lockalderson at gmail.com. It also contains another 15 slides about how you search companies for people, how you do networking into companies. Uh, one of our other people does that. I think Terry Sullivan handles that pretty well in his presentation. So don't take the time to do that. Patty, are there other questions? I don't see any other questions in the chat, but uh, if anybody has any other questions, you can uh, speak up or you can enter it in the chat and I can read it out. And if there aren't any other questions. Um, hey, Patty, Jim here. Uh, hey, Locke, I got a question for you. I know uh, for people in transition, you, you showed how you can add a, um, you know, Another job. line item in experience section. What about also uh, uh, LinkedIn also added that where you can take a career break or you can put in like is when you're there, it's, on that slide where it has the additional sections that you can take taking a break, educational break or sabbatical. Yeah. I think it's one of the other slides that you can insert in there. Okay, and some so companies do grant sabbatical. Some of the high tech firms, particularly in California. Okay. One of the perks that they use. So that's another thing that you can do. But, but recruiters are going to ask the question, what have you been doing since your last job? Right. You know? Okay. So I have a guy who's taken a job and he's, he's working as a consultant. That used to be another red flag for recruiters. You know, is the guy a, rec a consultant or is he just looking for a job? Well, he actually has, you know, four or five consulting assignments that he's done. They're pretty big, you know, $10 million projects. So again, if you have those, you want to list those because people are going to ask those questions. And you, okay. the other thing I'll mention about your profile and your resume, they don't have to match 100%, but there can't be any conflicts on them because if there are differences in dates on things like that, it's an immediate red flag for recruiters. And they do check. We do check on those kind of things. You know, you can check them pretty quickly and look at somebody's resume and compare it on your screen against their profile. You know, draw up two screens on your on your on your desktop. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions in the chat or anything else that anybody wants to ask while we have a lot? The other slide, that slide share slide, I think is in the chat about comparing your headline is worth doing to see how your current headline shows up and then quick going in and tweaking it with some adjectives add strength and credibility to it. See if it doesn't improve your rating. I know it's a fun little thing to play around with. Mm -hmm. And Locke, how much I know that, you know, all the different AI tools that are out there right now. Um, so people are using AI to update their resume, update their LinkedIn profile. Like how, um, how do real recruiters, I guess, figure out like, okay, um, this is what something an AI is doing versus this is the, you know, what the person is doing. Um, Again, it's the same, it's the same situation of having somebody else write your resume for you. There are some good resume writing services that are out there, but again, you want to know what you did. And sometimes the AI is going to put, pick the best of somebody in your profession and talk about the best things that you've done, but you may not have ever done those things. So it's going to be in your profile and you get to ask a question about it. Well, um, let me see, I just really can't remember when I did that. I know I did it, though. So when somebody asks a question like that, it's always a red flag for recruiters. 
And recruiters and hiring managers, one of the things they're looking to do is to minimize risk. They don't want to make a mistake and hire the wrong person. Again, I know I've had to walk people to the door that have been dishonest. I won't say dishonest. They haven't been totally honest about their background. Somebody said they had a degree. You do the background check and they're two courses short. And if they've lied or been not told the truth about their education, what other things are they not telling the truth about? It just raises too many questions and there's too much information about you out there on the internet. Yeah. Um, there was a question in the chat. It says, when I look at my analytics and look at quote, job titles you were found for, end quote, only thing that shows up is graduate. Does that mean job titles aren't showing up for me? That's entirely possible. Okay. So it's when you when you're when people are doing searches, they may not be finding the titles that are in your profile. So take a look at somebody who would go in and do a search for yourself, like a recruiter or accountant in your geographic area, and take a look what's in there. The first 10 people, take a look, take a look and see what's in their profiles. And if some of that applies to you, use it in yours. See if you can't improve your rating. Because it's a ratings game, whether it's whether it's resumes. You know, 100 people say that they're interested in a job pro, a job posting, 75, 80% of them are going to get eliminated by the applicant tracking software because something didn't match. Same thing applies to, to LinkedIn profiles because there's a there's a uh, an algorithm that does a search. And if there aren't the matches they're looking for, you're going to get knocked out of the box. So one thing I wanted to bring up, too, is a lot of times companies have merged, they've changed names over the years, et cetera. So do you put the company that it was called and then put in parentheses, it's now called this company? Yeah, or, vice, or vice versa. Or vice you, versa. Sometimes, sometimes LinkedIn does that. I know when I was with Siebel, if you look at my profile, I was with Siebel from 98 to 2006, and then it was acquired by Oracle. Those are, those are LinkedIn Oracle. I mean, not Oracle. LinkedIn actually links those two together as one slot of jobs. So actually uh, that shows from 98 to 2010 when I was with Oracle Corporation or a predecessor company, it actually links them together. But if it, it's unclear, yes, do identify. If you notice on mine, I don't have Mostec on there. When I came to Dallas, I worked for a company called Mostec. At the time they, they, they were the leading, world's leading producer of random access memories. And now they went out of business in 83. So recruiters wouldn't recognize that. That's why, again, you want to cut off some of the prior experience that you've had and just list company titles and your company company names and your title and what any, any accomplishment that you might have had in a prior professional experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, One of those, if you look, just look at my, there on my bio that's on the screen, Continental Airlines is now part of United. Mm-hmm. E systems is part of Raytheon systems. So those are some things that they're real, they happen. Mm -hmm. And Mullen International was acquired by Lee Heck Harrison. So okay. Well, thank you, Patty, for hosting. Going today. back to I got a question or sure. more of a comment. Um going back to uh, LinkedIn and resume. Um the last company I worked for actually had a service that compared the two. And they called me out. One of the jobs end date was two months off between LinkedIn and uh, my resume. And they called me out. I had an explanation, the typo, <laughs> but uh, just uh, wanted to point out that it's vitally important that they match because to your comment a minute ago, Locke, uh, they look at any discrepancy as uh, uh you know, you're trying to hide something and they may pass. Yeah. Well, the company I mentioned where I had to walk the person to the door, we actually got people security clearances. So that was one of the things that would show up in a hurry. But you're right. Now, that sounds a little bit too detailed for me. But again, <laughs> yep. as you say, some companies do that. So you have to be aware that not everybody's going to give you the benefit of the doubt. It's true. Thanks for yep, sharing. They that. hired me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions from anybody that you'd like to have Locke answer for you while we have him? Okay. 
just comment, uh, thanks, Locke. Always a good presentation. Um, don't see any other questions coming through. Again, if you want to have a copy of the presentation, please send them an email at the address listed on here. And then we can go from there. Thank you, Locke. Thank you, Patty. All Thank right. You. Okay. Do turn in to some of my fellow presenters. I do excellent work. Terry and Ruth and Kurt all give you different perspectives of how you use LinkedIn. So Absolutely. And next week, we're going to have Kurt Vandermotter, um, who's going to be showing us exactly how LinkedIn Recruiter works. And so you'll go behind the scenes. And it's really eye-opening to see how he finds people. And uh, hopefully you can join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. And so with that, thank you very much, everybody, for attending today. Remember to save the chat. And i um, looking forward to seeing you at our next uh, Career DFW meeting, which actually there's, um, if you're local, there's the pit crew uh, meeting tomorrow. And then also on Friday, um, we will have the North Dallas Plano Group, where it's going to be part two of Matt Keelan's technology tips and tricks. Um, he, uh, so for those of you who were on last week, we had a lot to cover. He has a lot more to cover this upcoming week and we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Benny. All right, thank you, have a good day. Take care. All right, bye-bye.